I usually call my incoming packages Christmas, but uh, this one's a little too literal. Um, PCB Way is <laughs> used Christmas boxes. I'm not too sure why, but anyways, new boards are in. And if you've seen the thumbnail, you know what they are. So let's get to it. PCB Way stickers, of course. And then there's these. This is what this video is about. These are what uh, another video is going to be about. But uh, here we go. Got the awesome PCB Way pens. Just one? Yeah, it's just one. We have to make more projects. So, yeah, I guess Merry Christmas in uh, late June. But these are what we are interested in. So, PCB Way sponsors me in order for me to show you guys what you can do with uh, PCB Way. But instead of that, I decided to show you guys what you can save by using PCB Way. A whole bunch of you may remember that I bought some fuse boxes, fuse boards a little while ago. And what this is, is this is a PCB version of that. These are a little fuse board. Simple Electronics's Simple Fuse Board version 1. Now these are version 1 because I had to design the custom footprint for both these uh, screw terminals and for these fuse holders so there's no guarantee that any of them will fit. Here are the terminals and I really want to zoom you in but I want to make sure that you see that this is all in one shot whether or not I nailed it. So let's see. Oh, that fits in just perfectly. And I use these giant pads so that I would be able to um, put a lot of solder and a lot of mechanical hold to that. Okay, so this footprint worked. What about the other footprint for the fuse holders? This one is the one I'm a little bit more doubtful about. If it fits tightly, actually I'll take the one with the fuse inside already. If it fits tightly, I'll still uh, I'll still count that a victory as long as it works. Okay, here it goes. It fits. It totally fits. I'm gonna have to solder that on and make sure it works. So let me set you up for that and we will do some soldering. All right, I'm all set up to solder here, uh, but soldering is a little bit boring. So while I solder, I will show you the, um, you know, the, the features on this board. So first and foremost, you've get you've got these screw terminals, uh, which fit in like so. And these screw terminals um, here on the input. So this is where the voltage comes in. Um, then it, it allows you to feed four separate circuits. So there's two positive and two negative. And the reason I went for two positive and two negative is so you can actually daisy chain these or you can just use two wires to get more current through. I wasn't quite sure about the amount of current handling of these screw terminals, so that's why you know, if you need more current, you got it. I think I'll actually use some uh, cheaper solder for this because, uh, oh boy, that uses a lot of solder up. I use these big pads too because I tried to move as much current as possible. Just got to make sure that this is flush. That did get really hot. So, uh, voltage comes in, you know, this way. So positive, negative. And then uh, the fuses, the positives go over and jump to, you know, this side here of the fuses, and then through the fuse and out to this side and to circuit one, two, three, and four. I also left a white space there 
So you can actually label your circuits if you want to. So if you have, you know, I don't know, you have a circuit for, let's say, um, I don't know, battery charger. You can actually put like, you know, the word charger on it so that you can easily remember what your circuit is for. I don't label my circuits nearly enough, so this is just something I wanted to add. Here we go. Um, this is also standard one ounce copper, but uh, I will be checking the current handling. And if it's not enough, you can always order this in two ounce copper. Using a little bit of a hotter iron here too. I'm using uh, 385C on my 6040 lead solder. Okay, that one's there. Good. And third. I also specifically designed this to use automotive style uh, mini fuses, not the micros, but the mini. And I've done that so that you can easily find replacements anywhere. Basically any automotive store, Amazon, they're really easy to find and the bases for them are really cheap as well. So I'll link to all the parts you need in the description. Ooh, this ground plane is a little hard to solder. Seems like you do need a reasonable soldering iron for this, uh, which is a good sign. If the uh, copper is difficult to heat up, it probably means that I have enough copper mass in order to make a successful circuit board. Yeah, this ground pour is quite difficult to solder onto. You can see it just wicks the heat right away. Got the uh, terminal blocks soldered in. That was a real torture test. Had to bump up the temperature to 425 on the iron. I really should have used a big beefy tip, but you know, here we are. So next step is the uh, fuse holders. They should be a little bit easier, but I think I will put a fuse in each and every one of them in order to solder them. So I'm just gonna hold that in like that and the tabs, oh, these, these are still very hot. The tabs do stick out, but quite barely. Trying to get some solder onto that. Oh, and it fell through. It's going to be a little bit more finicky. Uh, don't forget, the one who designed the pads is me. So I got no one to blame but myself. There we go, should be able to get that through. That's kind of straight. Oh boy, that gets hot. That looks straight. All right, let's do the other ones. These pads, I didn't want to make them oblong. They are circular, or the holes at least. So I want to put enough solder to go into the hole. That 
don't know if you remember from the mailbag video, but these fuses fit extremely tightly into the holders. And so I was a little concerned that they wouldn't come out again. And so that's why I have this um, big pad. I really want to make sure I don't tear anything in and out when I install and pull out the fuse. I'm going to let that cool and do the other ones. Got them all soldered up. Um, I have some good news too, because if you use a small flat screwdriver and just kind of shove it in there and wiggle it around a little bit, the fuses don't actually go in as tough. So it's actually not too bad. It needs a little bit of drag for sure to get these um, marks on the pins because you need a good connection. But um, yeah, just wiggling this little screwdriver around just a little bit actually, um, you know, loosen them up. So that was pretty neat. Here is what it looks like on the bottom if you're going to criticize my uh, soldering like I know some of you like to do. Some of these joints are better than others. But yeah, keep in mind you're going to need a high power um, soldering iron with a high mass tip to get this done. Now, just need to hook some stuff up to this and give it a test drive. Got myself all set up with uh, three loads here. These are just uh, some 12 volt amber bulbs. Um, these things should be fairly good for just demonstrating the basic operation. We're going to have to put this thing through a torture test in a different video. But uh, I've got 12 volts coming onto here, uh, 12 volt and ground, and I have a 10 amp current limit. These guys are about a third of an amp a piece, so I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. And we're going to turn that on. And so basically the 12 volt will be coming up to the top terminals of these fuse holders and then you pop the fuse into here and when I pop it in it should turn on each light one at a time. So there's one. There's two. And there's three, and we can obviously do uh, the fourth one here like so, but I don't have anything connected to it. Now, um, again, this is not a torture test, but we can check how much voltage we are losing between, you know, this terminal here where the voltage is actually coming in and this terminal here where the voltage is actually coming out to our circuit. So if I put this in maybe like that so you can see. Okay, I will put the positive here and the negative here and that should tell us how much voltage we've lost. And I have six millivolts on that one. 6.3 millivolts on that one. Six millivolts on that one. And this one has no current so it shouldn't lose anything. Oh, 1.6 millivolts of difference there. So basically that is uh, six millivolts lost between here uh, and going all the way to this connection here through the fuse to this connection here through this connection here to this screw terminal so there's quite a few connections in there for it to lose voltage Ooh, neat these things are smoking probably because these bulb holders are absolutely terrible so yeah, let me know what you think of this circuit board. I think it's a cheap way to get some power distribution in your shop. Um, if you look at the description below, you'll have the link to this board. You'll have the link to the components you need. And I hope that you'll order some yourself. Thanks for watching.